Hello everybody. Today I am starting module 5 and this is my first lecture. In the earlier modules I have discussed this uh, axial and torsional vibration. Besides this there is one very important mode of vibration in a continuous system that is the transverse vibration or it is the flexural vibration which causes due to the bending of the beam okay so a beam member which is having length far far greater than the width so in that case the vertical or transverse displacement is the most important and in the transverse displacement the contribution of bending moment is the most significant contribution of shear and others are small compared to the bending moment so today i will discuss the transverse vibration of beams now in this lecture i will give the introduction to various beam theories and why it is applicable derivation of the equation of motion for Euler Bernoulli beam this is one of the very common element of the beam model so that I will discuss how to derive the equation of motion using the Newton second law then I will derive the equation of motion uh, of the same beam using the Hamilton principle boundary value problems from the equation of motion will be formulated with an aim to determine the natural frequencies and mode shape okay so let us see wh what is actually beam beam is a common structural element that are found in many applications in building in bridges in uh, say in aircraft everywhere you will find these components are behaving like a beam this beam actually resists load by bending and it has adequate bending resistance compared to other resistance due to torsion and others so bending resistance is the most significant here and in this member you will find the width is very much less compared to its length of course the other dimension that is depth is also less but compared to length but in some cases when the length depth ratio is significant then behavior of beam is different so different model have to be constructed now here let us see in the beam due to transverse load you will find that it is deflecting downward because the downward load is there so it is undergoing a deflection and in this deflection contribution of bending moment is the most compared to the shear so the strain energy that is stored in the beam has major contribution from bending moment now there are examples that if you see a multi-story frame building that is building that is under construction you can see this horizontal member horizontal member are the beam element which carries the load transferred from the slab and uh, this other beam also so these are the horizontal members that is called the beam similarly this is also a beam of different boundary conditions in bridges also you will find that bridge deck is supported by beam which is known as girder and here it is an example of steel plate girder that is built up section for the beam so beam is everywhere and behavior of beam sometimes gives a very acceptable engineering solution for a complicated problem also so let us see how the beam vibration can be formulated now if i go to the beam theories there are different beam theories so euler bernoulli beam theory is the most common beam model or beam theory that is adopted in practice so in that model 
shear deformation and rotary inertia are neglected. So this is the most important part of the Euler Bernoulli beam theory. Only bending moment is considered. So if I want to derive the uh, equation of motion for Euler Bernoulli beam theory using the energy principles, I will concentrate on the the strain energy due to bending moment. Of course, if I take account of the strain energy due to shear and uh, this torsion, then their contribution will be negligible. Now, next theory is Rayleigh's beam theory. It is slightly modified compared to Euler Bernoulli beam theory. In that case, the rotary inertia is included in addition to bending. However, shear deformation is neglected. So that is the Rayleigh's beam theory. If you see the difference between Euler Bernoulli beam theory and Rayleigh's beam theory, Rayleigh's beam theory takes into account one additional uh, object that is the rotary inertia. Shear deformation is neglected in both the cases. But Euler Bernoulli beam theory, rotary inertia is also neglected. Then a shear beam theory. Here the effect of bending and shear deformations are considered while rotary inertia is neglected. So here bending and shear deformations are considered but rotary inertia has no significant contribution in the displacement of this type of beam. Then the updated version of all these three model is Timoshenko beam model. In this theory effect of bending, shear, deformation and rotor inertia all are included. So this theory predicts uh, almost uh, all the uh, effect that are possible in practice. However, SAS theory gives, Timoshenko beam theory gives a complex equation which sometimes difficult to solve without the aid of numerical techniques. Even the analytical solution is also slightly cumbersome. So therefore, for easy applications and for acceptable results in practical application, if the dimension of the elements that is the width is less compared to length and depth also, then we can go just the first model that is Euler Bernoulli beam theory, which are widely used in many modeling techniques. Okay. If I see the comparison between the four beam models, I can see that Euler Bernoulli beam, the bending moment is taken, transverse displacement is taken, shear deformation not, rotor inertia is also not. Then if I come to release theory, then here bending moment is considered, transverse displacement is is taken into account where shear deformation is neglected but again rotary inertia is included. So you can see the difference in the tabular form that I have given here. Then shear, if I take the shear beam model, then bending moment is uh, considered, transverse displacement is also there, everywhere you will get the transverse displacement but contribution of bending moment is most here in the Euler Bernoulli beam theory. Of course, the other effects are neglected completely. In shear beam theory, the bending moment is taken into account, transverse displacement and shear deformation, while rotary inertia is ignored. Now, Timoshenko beam model, all the three effects are considered, bending moment, shear deformation and rotary inertia. As a result of this, Timoshenko model can be appropriately simulate a beam whose depth is uh, considerable. That means it is seen that if uh, the span depth uh, ratio is greater than 10, then Timoshenko beam model gives uh, almost correct results compared to this, compared to other models. But you will find a paper publication also reported that the natural frequency difference is observed if one uh, considered the four beam model. So this difference 
of course is uh, negligible if the dimension of the beam that is the width of the beam is much less than the length of the beam and also depth. So in that case Euler Bernoulli beam model appropriately uh, simulate the physical this object. So therefore we will go for Euler Bernoulli beam first to develop the equation of motion using Newton's second law and then by using Hamilton principle. Now there are certain assumptions in the beam theories. This assumption despite the fact that uh, the shear deformation sometimes neglected, rotary inertia sometimes neglected or taken into account, these assumptions are actually common to all the four beam models. So what are the assumptions let us see one dimension that is in axial direction that is I call the length of the beam is larger than other two dimension that is the width and depth. The material is Hookean that is the uh, linear elasticity rule is followed. The third assumption is poison effect is neglected. Fourth assumption the cross section is symmetric so that neutral axis and centroidal axis coincide. If it does not happen then you will get the coupling effect of uh, torsion with the bending moment. So that is not there in all the beam theories. So therefore cross section is symmetric say a rectangular section where the neutral axis and central axis coincides and there is also concept of shear center and in symmetrical section the shear center also coincides with the centroid of the section. So in that case there is no offset of the shear center from the centroid of the section. As a result there is no torsional motion and therefore no coupling of the bending and torsion takes place. So the fifth assumption the planes perpendicular to the neutral axis remain perpendicular after deformation. So that assumption is very important for small deformation theory and angular protection is small so that the small angle assumption can be used. So based on that assumption we will now formulate the differential equation of motion. Okay. So let us first derive the equation of motion using this Newton second law. So Newton second law if I see the basic of Newton second law is your this mass into acceleration that is the inertia force should be balanced by all the forces that are acting on the beam. Okay. So here what happens a beam that is uh, shown here is subjected to load fxt that you are seeing that fxt is the load transverse load that is acting here and let mass of the beam and flexural rigidity be mx eix and suppose viscous damping is also considered but in that model I have not shown the viscous damping force however if one want to show the viscous damping force then if this is the direction of motion upward then viscous damping force will act opposite to motion so it can be also taken as a distributed force okay now in this assumption we have taken that force is distributed continuously that means it can be distributed uniformly or non-uniformly also but continuous distribution is assumed. Flexural rigidity Eix that is E is the modulus of elasticity of the material I is the uh, moment of inertia of this section. Product of this is flexural rigidity is very important parameter for the beam. If the flexural rigidity is high then beam behaves like a rigid body. So here because of the flexural rigidity which is not very high the beam deflects transversely or bending takes place. Now here you can see this is also taken as a function of space variable that means this cross section of the beam, beam may vary along its span and such cases are uh, practically also possible because you have seen in many beam 
especially in cantilever, the larger cross section is provided or larger depth is provided at the fixed end and low depth is provided at the free end because you know from bending moment uh, consideration the requirement of depth is more at the fixed end. Now first I will draw the free body diagram of the element that is the dx ok. So this element is taken to formulate the differential equation of motion. So I have taken this element you can see here and here the forces are if I take the positive sign convention of the shear force like that at the left hand edge the downward force shear is taken positive and the right hand side the upward shear is taken as negative. So here I taken this convention and the bending moment convention you can see this is the positive sign convention of the bending moment taken here. Now since the uh, external force is distributed in any manner uniform or non-uniform in the small element I will assume that distribution is uniform. So in the small element fxt dx is the distribution. So in addition if one considers the damping force then a damping force can be added here which will be cx into dy dt where y is the velocity of the velocity of the beam at this point. So del y by del t is the velocity of the beam and c is the damping coefficient. Now c may also vary along the length of the beam because we have seen that damping is in most of the cases it is proportional to the mass. So if the beam has a variable cross section then accordingly mass will also vary so also damping. So damping can be considered as a downward force here uh, to resist the upward motion. Okay. Now after knowing the free body diagram let us uh, write the equilibrium equation. So if I now write the equilibrium equation here you can see that uh, you can see here write the equation for this vertical equilibrium ok. So force equation of motion in the vertical direction is first written. So in the uh, right hand side this force is taken qxt plus del q by del x into dx in the left hand side this force is opposite so it is taken qxt then other vertical force fxt dx resisting force is the inertia force and the damping force so inertia force is m into del square y by del t square dx and damping force is cx del y by del t into dx so after simplifying this equation we will now get this equation del q by del x plus fx equal to mx del square y by del t square plus cx del y by del t. So this is the equation of motion of the beam when the damping is also considered as well as the forcing function f is also considered. Okay. Now you can see in the next slide the moment equilibrium equation is established. So taking the moment of all the forces about the left face of the element what we get here this bending moment mxt plus del mxt by del x into dx this is the incremental bending moment minus in the left hand side this is the opposing moment so mxt minus mxt plus the moment of this force vertical force at this edge so qxt plus del qxt by del x into dx into dx that is the distance uh, of this force from the edges and uh, for the externally applied force on that portion small element the force is fxt into dx 
and uh, its centroid will be dx by 2 from here. So this multiplied by dx by 2 will give the moment for this force. Now dx by 2 and dx, so the dx square term is coming which can be neglected and after cancelling some common term we will get the equation for moment equilibrium is del mx by del mxt by del x plus qxt equal to 0. So again we know in Euler Bernoulli beam there is a relation between this bending moment and curvature. So that can be brought into picture. However, in the first equation that we have derived with the consideration of vertical equilibrium. So there if I substitute this q from here, now we will get the double derivative of m. So therefore we are getting minus del square m x t by del x square plus f x t equal to m x del square y by del t square plus c x del y by del t. So this is what is equation but here the transverse displacement y is here but bending moment should also be related to the transverse displacement and this is the relation between the bending moment and curvature. So mxt is equal to eix del square y by del x square for the sign convention taken here. Therefore the above equation becomes if I substitute here say mxt eix del square y by del x square is substituted in the previous equation here. Here it is substituted ei del square y by del x square in place of m. So in that case we are getting minus del square by del x square del square y by del x square plus fxt equal to mx del square y by del t square plus cx del y by del t. So we can see this is the complete equation of motion of transverse vibration of the beam. So transferring this to the right hand side we now get del square by del x square into del square y by del x t by del x square plus mx del square y by del t square plus cx del y by del t equal to fxt. For free vibration of course fxt will be 0 and here you can see that it is a fourth order partial differential equation as compared to the axial vibration and torsional vibration of the bar we have seen there second order partial differential equation was obtained from derivation. Now here you are getting fourth order differential equation. So that is the difference with the transverse vibration of the beam and the torsional axial vibration of the beam and also the transverse vibration of string that give that was obtained as a second order differential equation but here you are getting the fourth order differential equation. So that difference you should note it ok. Now let us derive this equation by Hamilton principle. Euler Bernoulli beam model again we will adopt and for convenience we will take this mass damping as well as your this EI are constant along the span of the beam. So there is no variation of cross section, no variation of density, no variation of damping. Now according to Hamilton principle we know that time integral because Hamilton principle is a integral principle. So time integral of variation of t minus u plus w dt and limit of time integration is t1 to t2, t1 and t2 is the limit, the starting point is t1 and the ending point is t2 is equal to 0. So that is the Hamilton principle. Now in that equation three parameters are there, one is t, capital T is the kinetic energy of the body, u is the strain energy of the system and w is the work done due to non-conservative force field. So if one neglects damping and externally applied force then it is possible to write the Hamilton's equation only with 
this delta t minus u dt with integration limit t1 and t2. So, in that case uh, t minus u is also named as Lagrangian, t minus u is called L Lagrangian. So, in most cases we neglect the non-conservative force field and therefore equation becomes simplified. But with inclusion of non-conservative force field, the Hamilton equation is written in this way and it is sometimes called as extended Hamilton's principle. Okay. So, let us see what is the kinetic energy of the beam. Kinetic energy of the beam is T is equal to half 0 to L with the limit m del y by del t whole square dx. So, that is the kinetic energy of the beam. Strain energy of the beam is u equal to half 0 to L that is the space integral E i I have taken common and del square y by del x square whole square dx. So, this is u ok. Work done by non conservative forces are w equal to 0 to L and uh, the work done due to damping force is negative. So, therefore, here minus c del y by del t f x t into y dx. So, this y should be there here to represent the displacement quantity ok. Now, take the variation of kinetic energy. So, delta t equal to limit will be t 1 to t 2 m del y by del t del by del t del y dx. So, this is the kinetic energy, but however, this has to be integrated from the limit t 1 to t 2 and here the variation of the kinetic energy is obtained in the domain of the beam that is 0 to L. Now, here if you see that integral how it is taken if I consider the two parts two variable here then integration by parts rule can be followed. So, if I take this is the first function and this is the second function. So, first function I have written as it is with constant m and then integration of the second function del y and its limit t1 to t2 up lower limit t1 upper limit t2 minus derivative of the first function. So, first function is del y by del t and its first derivative is taken. So, del square y by del t square and the integration of the second function. So, del y and the whole thing is again integrated in the limit t1 to t2 into dt and dx is there because again the whole thing is integrated in the domain 0 to L. Okay. So, that is the variation integral of the variation of kinetic energies that is delta t because we know in the expression of Hamilton principle we have three component del t dt that we have to found with a limit t1 to t2 then minus del u dt that again have to be integrated from t1 and t2 plus del t del w dt that have to be integrated from t1 to t2 ok. Now, when I get this expression then I will again move forward for calculating this the variation of u and its integral. So, delta u dt integration t1 to t2 is now calculated. Now, u you can see the expression for u is half 0 to l e i del square y by del x square whole square dx. So, if I take the variation of this first let us take the variation of this then again we will go for integration. So, if I take the variation of this e i del square y by del x square del square by del x square this operator is coming and then del y dx dt ok this variation is taken. Then we go for integration of this. So, integration of this quantity gives again I, I take these two are the two uh, these two quantities are separate functions. So, E i del square y by del x square is taken one function and del square by del x square into del y is taken as another function. So, integration by products rule is again applied. So, first 
let us calculate it this uh, taking is a first function so first function i have written ei del square y by del x square and integration of the second function because this is double derivative so after integration it becomes a single derivative del by del x into del y and its limit 0 to l so that is one part then minus the derivative of this function ei del cube y by del x cube so here it is second derivative so now it is converted to third derivative after derivation uh, differentiation with respect to time then the integration of this so del by del x del y dx by dt but you can see again it is not completed because the another integration have to be done to come into a stage where the variation of del y only appears then we can collect the common terms with del y and then we can arrive at the differential equation. So another step is required for del u time integration and this is done here. Next slide. Okay. So in the previous slide we have obtained up to this. In the next step we are now going say this is already completed this part. So ei del square y by del x square del by del x del y and its limit 0 to l so that is already there minus now here i take this as the first function and this is the second function so the derivative uh, first function as written here into integration of the second function so it is del y integration of the second function is del y and its limit is put from 0 to l plus because minus so minus again here minus is there so minus minus plus sign will appear plus the differentiation of the first function differentiation of the first function is coming as a fourth derivative so fourth derivative is coming here now from the previous slide where we have obtained del u dt with one integration still remaining we came to this step and then we need to carry out this integration to complete the quantity del u dt with integration t1 to t2 so if i take the integration of this this is not to be touched as already we have arrived at the condition putting the limit so ei del square y by del x square del by del x into del y integration limit 0 to l minus ei and then i carry out the integration so again this is taken as the first function and this is taken as the second function so first function integrate remain as it is minus ei del cube y by del x cube and the integration if i carry out then it is del y and limit 0 to l okay so that i have got first this condition and then i have to integrate it ei del cube y by del x cube that actually here it is cubic quantity now after differentiation this becomes a fourth order differential uh, quantity so del cube y by del x cube now it becomes del 4 y by del x 4 and ei coefficient is there and after integration of this it becomes del y and dx dt is there okay so now we come to the non-conservative work that is the integration we already found out w is equal to this this is the non-conservative uh, for work done due to non-conservative force field. So if C is a damping coefficient, dy dt and into C is the damping force in opposes the motion. So therefore we assign quantity sign negative plus fxt is the externally applied force and then the y the displacement force into displacement will give the work done into dx okay so if i take the 
variation of this and then take the time integral t1 t2 and already it is there this 0 to l because it is in the domain we can easily write this t1 t2 0 to l minus c del y by del t plus fxt del y dt dx so that we are getting here okay so three components of this are already found so there are three components if i see the hamilton's equation the first component is this second component is this and third component is this so all the components we have obtained now we will this add together and proceed towards the differential equation so after combining all the components we now get 0 to l m del y by del t del y t1 to t2 minus t1 to t2 m del square y by del t square that is coming from the kinetic energy quantity into del y del t into dx so this is the integration that is time integration here remains and has to be integrated in the domain of the beam element okay minus then we are collecting the terms for this del u del u del dt delta u dt integration t1 to tt t1 to t2 so that is the quantity that we have obtained so here you can see ei del cube y by del x cube into del y 0 to l plus ei del square y by del x square del by del x delta y 0 to l this is the variational quantity and then we are getting this ei del square del to the power 4 y by del x 4 plus c del y by del t minus fxt and the coefficients are del y dx and then again we carry out the time integration because time integration is common now since delta y vanishes at t is equal to t1 and t is equal to t2 and delta y is not zero in the domain of the beam x 0 to x in the limit 0 to l so we can get that this term inside the third bracket has to be zero so that quantity we have to take as zero so therefore we are getting a differential equation ei del to the power 4 y by del x to the power 4 plus m we are now collecting the inertia term m del square y by del t square plus we are collecting the damping term c del y by del t equal to this term f x t that is the externally applied force so this is the differential equation governing differential equation now you can see the nature of this equation this equation contains two variable x and t and our aim is to solve for y now you can see here it is a fourth order differential equation in space and second order with time now this quantity this will give the initial condition one with velocity another with displacement so at t is equal to t1 and t2 the velocity will be zero or known and del y that is the variation of displacement that is del y is a constant so that means if it is zero that should be zero so del y by del t either del y by del t is zero or del y equal to at t is equal to t1 and t2 is uh, zero that means y is constant that means y is known and if the boundaries or initially there is no curvature of the beam or beam is perfectly straight 
or there is no imperfection. So, in that case the initial displacement can also be taken 0. Now, come here this gives the boundary condition at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to L and also this gives another equation for boundary conditions at x is equal to 0 x is equal to L. But there may be several combinations that is that are interesting to note ok. Now, here you can see we get one equation E i del cube y by del x cube into del y and its limit 0 to L equal to 0. So, here what you get is you can say either this is 0 or del y is 0. So, del y is 0 means y is constant. So, that means the displacement at x is equal to 0 or x is equal to L at the ends are known. But in normal condition y is 0 at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to L if it is supported. So, another combination is E i del square y by del x square. So, this can be 0 or either the slope del y del x is constant. So, that means slope is known or 0, but in most of the cases uh, since it is not subjected to base excitation or not any force boundary condition. So, therefore, slope is taken as 0 in appropriate cases. So, let us examine the physical meaning of the end condition. If I take the various combination, first combination let us take E i del square y by del x square equal to 0. So, that gives bending moment equal to 0. This is the bending moment equation equal to 0 and displacement is 0. So, one combination is this bending moment is 0 and displacement is 0. So, combination of this will give you the hinge condition. So, beam with a hinge end. So, in that case displacement is 0 as, as well as bending moment is 0. Another condition this combination may be del y by del x equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. So, this gives you a fixed condition. This gives you fixed condition that is beam is completely fixed at the end. So, here deflection that takes place no deflection here and also it is parallel to the tangent. So, tangent is perfectly horizontal here you can see. So, that means slope is 0 here. So, that type of condition is fixed condition or claim condition. Another combination may be E i del cube y by del x cube equal to 0 and E i del square y by del x square equal to 0. So, this is the free condition. Now, free condition is a condition where you will get a rigid body mode as well as the elastic mode. So, this type of conditions are noticed in a long space vehicle or even a the vehicle on road. So, that is actually have also the elastic deformation as well as rigid body motion. So, free and the shear this is the physical meaning of this derivative with E i constant E i is shear and this is the bending moment. So, here shear force is 0 and here bending moment is 0. So, two conditions are satisfied at the free end. Okay. Then another condition is that is the free end that if I have a cantilever say for example, the deflection is there in a cantilever beam at this end neither this slope or deflection is 0. So, what boundary condition is taken here at the free end the shear force is 0 and bending moment is also 0. So, these conditions are taken at the free end. And here for example, it is a fixed end. So, here you can see the y is 0 and del y by del x is also 0. This condition another combination coming from another combination E i del cube y by del x cube that is equal to 0 and del y by del x equal to 0. So, this is the sliding support condition that means a beam is supported on a roller. We slide along the surface. So, in that case the condition that is the no shear force 
and slope is also 0. So, here shear force is 0 and slope is 0. So, that is the characteristics of the sliding supports. So, different the boundary conditions are obtained from the Hamilton's equation. So, one very interesting thing in Hamilton's uh, principle is that uh, we can obtain the uh, differential equation of motion as well as boundary condition simultaneously. But this is not possible in case of the Newton's second law or the force balance that we have applied earlier. Okay. So, four support conditions that are obtained from different combination of these n conditions are one is hinged, another is fixed and one is free and this sliding. So, sliding the shear force is 0 and also the slope is 0. Here the deflection and slope both are 0. Here bending moment and deflections are 0. But at the free end here this shear force and bending moment both are 0. Okay. Now let us uh, formulate the boundary value problem because boundary value problem is important to find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes. Once we obtain the natural frequency and mode shape, we can proceed further to obtain the force vibration response or free vibration response using the model superposition principle. However, boundary value problems have to be formulated first in case of continuous system you are getting the infinite number of natural frequencies we will have infinite number of natural frequencies and corresponding to each natural frequency we will get mode shape therefore the objective of the boundary value problem is to determine natural frequency natural frequency and mode shape mode shape is sometimes called the eigen shape and natural frequency is also known as eigen value now in case of beam the equation of motion that is obtained as a fourth order partial differential equation that is ei del to the power 4 y by del x to the power 4 plus m del square y by del t square equal to 0 that is the inertia term that you are noting here. So, we neglected here damping, we neglected damping and external force. Okay. Now, remembering that free vibration is always harmonic. So, we assume the displacement at any instant of time is equal to a space function into a time function which will be a harmonic function. In absence of damping, we neglect the phase difference. So, we write sin omega t where omega is the natural frequency. Natural frequency of the system. Remember the natural frequency is dependent on the physical parameters of the system that is mass, stiffness, etc. Similarly, mode shape, it does not depend on the exciting force. Now, substituting this in this differential equation. So, what I get is E i d to the power 4 phi d x to the power 4 that is after differentiating also sin omega t is taken as a constant because we are differentiating with respect to space. So, therefore, this quantity is taken as a constant here. In the right hand side, when I differentiate this function y with respect to t, we are getting the space function which is treated as a constant is written here, but this sin function sin omega t, it is differentiated twice and we are getting omega square with a minus sign. So, minus m omega square phi equal to 0. So, after substituting this, we get this equation. So, rewriting this as m omega square by e i as a factor lambda to the power 4, we now write this differential equation d to the power 4 phi 
by dx to the power 4 minus lambda to the power 4 phi equal to 0. So, this is the equation that we have to now solve to get the eigenfunction phi and the this parameter lambda. Parameter lambda will be related to the natural frequency because you know that from this equation we get omega equal to ei by m and lambda square we get this. So, omega is if I take the square root of this ei by m square root and lambda to the power 4 square root will be lambda square. So, this is the expression for natural frequency. So, we want to determine what is lambda and then if I get lambda we can now find the phi exactly the value of the functional shape of the phi but before that we have to solve this equation which will lead to a characteristic equation. So, let us see how it can be obtained. So, that is the usual procedure for differential equation. So, phi x equal to e to the power beta x we assume that it is the solution of this homogeneous equation. So, substituting this we are getting beta to the power 4 minus lambda to the power 4 equal to 0 and factorizing this we are getting beta square plus lambda square into beta square minus lambda square equal to 0. So, I have factorized this and I am getting this. Now, here you can see that if I now beta square plus omega square equal to 0 or beta square minus lambda square equal to 0. So, two possibilities are there beta square plus lambda square equal to 0 or either beta square plus lambda square equal to 0 or beta square minus lambda square equal to 0. So, solving this we get beta is equal to plus minus i lambda and here solving beta is equal to plus minus lambda. So, four roots are beta is equal to plus i lambda then another is minus i lambda and the third one is plus lambda minus lambda. So, solution is now written with a constraints of integration as the phi x equal to e to the power i lambda x. So, one constant you can assign here. Similarly, all the constants you can assign here. So, c 1 e to the power i lambda x plus c 2 e to the power minus i lambda x plus c 3 e to the power lambda x plus c 4 e to the power minus lambda x. Now, you know that e to the power i lambda x can be written as cos lambda x plus i sin lambda x. Similarly, e to the power minus i lambda x can be written as cos lambda x minus i sin lambda x. And now, the e to the power lambda x plus lambda x can be written as cos hyperbolic lambda x plus sin hyperbolic lambda x and e to the power minus lambda x equal to cos hyperbolic lambda x minus sin hyperbolic lambda x. Substituting this here, we get this uh, term with a cos hyperbolic function and constants are modified. So, the final solution is phi x equal to a 1 cos hyperbolic lambda x plus a 2 sin hyperbolic lambda x plus a 3 this is a trigonometrical function cos lambda x plus a 4 sin lambda x. So, we are getting combination of hyperbolic function and trigonometrical function. So, this is the solution of the homogeneous equation that is the transverse vibration of beam. Now, this solution can be utilized to find out these eigenvalues and eigen shapes. Now, here I am calling it eigen shape because this will 
give you a continuous function and in case of discrete uh, system we will call it as eigen vector because we will get the uh, displacement at the discrete point and then we can join and get the shape but here you will get a continuous function where a1 a2 a3 a4 are constants of integration that have to be found from the boundary conditions and uh, after application of two boundary condition at each node because at node or ends a set of homogeneous algebraic equations are obtained actually say a beam is there of length l at left hand end say x is equal to 0 and right hand end x is equal to l so at x is equal to 0 suppose it is a hinged in beam two ends are hinged in so at uh, x is equal to 0 we have the displacement 0 bending moment in 0 x is equal to l also we have the displacement 0 and bending moment in 0 so after application of a boundary condition that four equations are obtained and that can be written in this form you will find that in the four equations a1 a2 a3 a4s are there the constants of integration that are unknown and in the other side the coefficients that will be obtained as a function of lambda l so lambda l that you are getting so a matrix equation you will get actually say one element you will get say f1 lambda l this is f2 lambda l like that f4 lambda l like that you will get in different rows you will get so the matrix is 4 by 4 so it has to be multiplied and everywhere the coefficient a1 a2 are there so we will get this a1 a2 a3 a4 and equal to 0 so this homogeneous equation is obtained okay so that means a function of lambda l it will be uh, in a matrix form and multiplied by the vector that is with a coefficient as the element a1 a2 a3 a4 now we can see this is a homogeneous equation this is a homogeneous algebraic equation this equation have to be solved first to get the lambda l but you note that the solution may be obtained say a i is 0 so this is one possibility a i is 0 but that will give you the trivial uh, solution that will not serve the purpose of finding the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions so other possibility is this the f lambda l so determinant of this matrix must be equated to 0 so with that assumption that uh, this is the homogeneous equation so a i 0 is ruled out so now we get for non trivial solution the determinant of the matrix f lambda l f uh, lambda l is a function so f is a function of lambda l equal to 0 after expanding the determinant multiple values of lambda l can be obtained actually theoretically infinite number of this lambda l will be obtained but infinite number is a theoretical concept for practical computation we have to take finite number of terms so this can be found out and corresponding to each of this function we get the mode shape function that is phi i x so that is what is the principle of boundary value problem in your uh, this bending vibration of beam now this procedure have to be illustrated with different boundary condition classical as well as non-classical let us summarize today's lecture in this lecture we introduced the transverse vibration of beams four beam theories and assumptions are stated four beam theories you know that euler bernoulli release shear beam theory and timoshenko beam theory the governing differential equation of motion of euler bernoulli beam model has been derived using newton's second law 
and Hamilton's equation. So that is the main part of the today's lecture, full mathematical derivation of this fourth order differential equation of motion has been done with the help of Newton's second law that is the force balance and Hamilton's energy principle, integral formulation. Then a boundary value problem has been formulated and discussed how the non-trivial solution can be obtained to find the infinite number of eigenvalues that is the natural frequencies and eigenfunctions of the beam. Thank you very much. Thank you.